Hey y'all, and by y'all I mean no one because no one's watching this. If you're new here, hi. Um, you can call me Merlin. That's not my real name. I just would rather not be stopped. If you're not new around here, welcome back, babe. Love to see you again. Alright, I'm not gonna dilly-dally too much in this intro. It's actually Tuesday. I usually record on a Saturday, but I didn't have time because I was busy procrastinating my assignment. So now I'm recording this video four days late, and I just feel like experimenting with my makeup a bit. Because why not? But alright y'all, y'all better settle in and put this video on two times speed. And that's if you have a low attention span. Grab a snack, settle in, tuck yourself into bed, and you should prepare to hear me gossip about the spiciest. Filthiest, dirtiest, freakiest, spiciest book I've ever read. Dune by Frank Herbert. Also, disclaimer, my script is here. Yes, I have a script, okay? Leave me alone. The only reason why I read this book in the first place was because my history teacher is a certified fanboy and he really wanted to see the Dune 2 movie with the class just for fun, just for an excuse to see it. So he made an entire assignment based off of the movie and then we had a field trip and watched it. And get this, the movie stars no one other than the People's Prince himself, Timothy Chalamet. What's up y'all? This is Timothy Chalamet. Zendaya. Austin. And we're uh, I'm gonna roast. I'm gonna move on. Go. Who are you gonna call, man? Hey, mom. That's right, your boy Timmy Tim. See me in the hallway, you know I hear my doggy. Feel the music, I'm bringing it back. Starring in the blockbuster film Dune 2 and Dune 1. If anyone here remembers one of my older videos from like a couple months ago about George Orwell's 1984, it's literally titled Timothy Chalamet and I Have Beef. It's because Timothy really likes that book 1984 and I hated that book so much. Ranked at two stars on Goodreads. We now have beef because what do you mean you like 1984 by George Orwell? What do you mean? We have beef, no vegetarian. See how it always comes back to 1984 in my videos? Every single time. I'll stay hating on him, thank you very much. So I had to watch the first Doom movie by myself, which was a complete waste of my time. Because what do you mean Zendaya was marketed as a main character, but she doesn't even get two minutes of speaking roles in the entire film? We just get flashes of her looking like... That shit could have been an email. I mean, nothing happened in the entire two and a half hours. So then yeah, I watched the second movie with my class in the movie theater and I'll say it, Austin Butler was cringe. What was this bald headed monochromatic man licking a knife and staring into the cameraman's soul for? <laughs> Thinking he did something. Now don't get it twisted, I love Austin Butler down. Austin? But that was not the story you thought it was. That was just creepy. But anyways, the second movie was actually a lot better in my opinion, but I was still left unsatisfied, so I decided to read the book because I'm a fucking nerd and I can't leave anything up to the imagination and I have to know every single detail about every single thing. So I naturally read the book. So let's get into the book. Dune by Frank Herbert. All more Dima Trades! Duke of Arrakis! Under the blue sea Santa! Now I don't even feel like putting on makeup because I feel like I actually kind of look nice today. I saw on TikTok they were like doing Dune makeup. Girl, that's not Dune makeup, that's just Middle Eastern inspired makeup. Get it right. Dune eyes. Girl, that's just a cat eye with some brown eyeshadow. It is not that serious. My mom just knocked on the door. The way I panicked at the disco was crazy. So our book starts off with the main character, Paul Atreides, who is a 15-year-old aristocratic twink. And he was born on the planet Caledon to his father, Leto Atreides. I need him biblically. I need him in a way that is concerning to feminism. Who is the Duke of Caledon, and then his mother, Jessica, is a Bene Gesserit concubine to his father. And they're all gonna move to the planet Arrakis together and become the Duke family. So Arrakis is also known as Dune to the indigenous peoples of the planet, and it's basically a planet made entirely of sand with very little water and very harsh living conditions, which makes it very hard for people to live there. And then the whole reason why they're moving to Arrakis is because Leto Atreides is moving there to take over position of the Duke of Arrakis from the Harkonnen family. And they're like rivaling families almost because the Harkonnens are seen as like the evil people and then Arrakis is like the good family. It really helps to think of this book as the literary amalgamation of like Star Wars and Game of Thrones. 
they're basically the same thing just make it like in space and a lot more political actually no both are very political they're equally as political but significantly less interesting so one of the first things i noticed about this book is that paul is actually a sassy little bitch which is actually really funny because in the movie our boy timmy tim timothy chalamet portrays him as like a really brooding emo teenager almost an adult i think he looks like he's like 20 in the movie but he's 15 in the book Get off me! You did this to me! You better desert made me afraid! And then the canon in the book is that he's just like a really annoying hormonal teenager and I can't relate to anything more than that. On several occasions, he calls the Bene Gesserit high priestess an old woman. It's actually really funny how the voice actor in the audiobook reads his dialogue because not once did he stutter. So now you might be wondering, at Merlin Lolo on Instagram, TikTok, Goodreads, all links in the description smash that like button like it's george orwell's forehead what the heck is a bene Gesserit? and to that i say go watch the movie or look it up on the internet <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding pookie keep watching the video you look so slay right now keep watching my video don't go pookie you're so slay anyway here's a quote from the reliable smash hit online scholarly resource Wikipedia. The Bene Gesserit are a group in Frank Herbert's fictional Dune universe. A powerful social, religious, and political source, the Bene Gesserit is described as an exclusive sisterhood whose members train their bodies and minds through the years of physical and mental conditioning to obtain superhuman powers and abilities that seem magical to outsiders. So basically, Paul's mom raised Paul to be a Bene Gesserit just like her. She was raised as a Bene Gesserit and um, she doesn't know who her parents are. She raised Paul to be one just because she wanted him to be this great hero. And even though it's against the rules, she did so anyway because she's a girl boss. She's a certified girl boss. And she's not like other girls. She's a bad girl. She doesn't follow the rules. The whole reason why she wasn't supposed to teach her son how to be a Bene Gesserit was because it's against the rules, I think. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's just because he's a man and we see how men deal with power in our universe. I wouldn't blame Frank Herbert for making the woman not like that idea. I don't blame them. I feel the same way. But before Paul can move to Arrakis with his family, he's forced to undergo this test by the high priestess Bene Gesserit. He has to put his hand in this box that makes him feel an immense amount of pain and he can't take his hand out or else the priestess will prick him with a needle that has poison and that will kill him. The whole idea is that the needle only kills animals and if he can't survive the test he is an animal because there's some idea in the universe that people can be animals but not every person is a human being and it has a lot to do with this weird eugenics kind of idea where they're trying to breed humans and it's very reminiscent of like the holocaust and it's very suspicious but we simply do not have the time to discuss this so let's move on so after paul passes the eugenics test the high priestess tells paul there's a prophecy where a man will be able to take this truth serum and unlock like his inner third eye and this is important because only women can do that and all the men who have ever tried have died <laughs> But obviously Frank Herbert didn't tell us this for no reason and it's just a really sad attempt at foreshadowing. Oh, I just got a bunch of this in my eye. This is a really old palette that my sister had. It's the Icing Naturally Bronze palette. And I was, us I was using these two shades and they're really, really dry. I'm kind of just speeding through this. I'm doing like a natural look and this lighting is doing my skin justice. Also, if you've seen the movie, it might come as a surprise to you that Paul has another sister. That literally gagged me. So apparently his sister was taken by the Harkonnens and she's presumably dead, but in hindsight, it may be the same sister that just shows up later in the book. But this just means that Frank did a really bad job writing the story because I'm really confused and that's his fault, not my fault. He should have told the story better. And it doesn't matter that I definitely didn't listen to this audiobook on 3.5 times speed. Also, Jessica is a fucking boy mom. The way she keeps staring at her son longingly, wishing that he embraces her is crazy. Like girl, he is not your man. It was kind of gross to read actually. Like it wasn't explicitly said that she is in love with her son, but it's very, very hinted at. And it makes me feel very icky. Like those boy moms on Instagram reels. So then the dad, um, Paul Atreides' dad, what's his name, Leto Atreides, he croaks. 
was assassinated by Yue, who was the Atreides family doctor. And basically he did it because the Harkonnens threatened to um, kidnap his wife. I think they did kidnap his wife. And then they said, if you don't kill him, we're gonna kill your wife. Yue helped launch an attack on the Atreides family. Basically, he poisoned the dad, and then before he died, he gave him a capsule to chew on and was like, if you chew on this in the presence of the Baron of Harkonnen, then the poison gas will emit from the capsule, and then he'll die. That's his way of getting revenge because he finds out that the Harkonnens actually killed his wife anyway, and Yue dies too somehow. And the actual crazy thing is that the mission doesn't even work out, like Baron doesn't even die. So what was all that for? It was all for nothing. What a bummer. The Baron isn't even half as intimidating as he is in the movie. Like in the movie, I was I was shaking in my boots, okay? In the book, I was like, what is this like oh freaking Humpty Dumpty looking ass man? Like, who cares? That's literally the vibe I bring to the function. Who cares? Not me. All right, so let me tell you the tea. The whole reason why the Harkonnens were attacking the Atreides family is because the Harkonnens used to have control of Dune or Arrakis, the emperor of the entire universe, I'd say, because he has control over every planet. The emperor is basically like, all right, guys, the Atreides family is going to take control of Arrakis now. And the Harkonnens, you don't get Arrakis anymore because Arrakis is very famous for its spice. Yes, literal spice which is found in the sand and can be harvested. This spice has a really high value and can be used to make money because it has similar effects to like drugs, kind of like psychedelics almost, like it opens your inner eye, it opens your third eye. You become woke from inhaling the sand, all right? Help, tell me why I'm scrolling on Instagram reels and I see this. <laughs> If you snored that shit, you'd be seeing rainbows in the future and the past, and you'd be seeing Jesus in conception. Because spice is such a high-valued, lucrative thing that you can have, the Harkonnens want control over it, which it can only be found on the planet Arrakis. Because they no longer have control of it because it's given to the Atreides house, they're like, I'm not gonna stand for that. So basically, the Harkonnens are like, okay, right, you need to assassin Leto Atreides, the Duke of Arrakis, and then I'll have control of him again. However, the Baron tries to make it seem like it was an accident or an assassin that didn't come from him so that he doesn't get in trouble for killing the Duke of Arrakis by the Emperor because the Emperor ultimately was the one to make this decision. The T is, instead of just being satisfied with killing Leto Atreides, the Baron's like, nah, I gotta go for the whole bloodline. He goes out of his way to capture Jessica and Paul Atreides and he decides to kill them. So he orders these soldiers to take them out into the middle of the desert and drop them there. The goal is that they'll either die of starvation or get swallowed by sandworms. The thing you need to know about sandworms is that there are these massive, massive worms bigger than like an entire house. And they're heavily feared because their mouths look like buttholes and they can eat an entire colony of people with one gulp. They're like the Super Sucker 9000s if you're picking up what I'm putting down. So because they're able to take Paul and Jessica to the middle of the desert to be dropped off, this means that the Harkonnen family can once again- oh my god this is so dirty. That is disgusting. I'm not gonna wash it though because what do you think I am? Anyways, because the um, Harkonnens are back and taking control of Arrakis, they're allowed to have their wealth again and this is really important because as we know wealth equals power and that's why the bitches who own slaves like Thomas Jefferson made it into the smash hit musical Hamilton by Lin-Manuel Miranda. <laughs> However, the story doesn't stop there. Paul may be a twink but he doesn't back down. Because Paul and Jessica don't want to be eaten by worms, they decide to use their Bene Gesserit powers. They have the ability to use their voices to bend people to their will and make them do what they want. Paul isn't as good at this because he's just a guy, however Jessica is very good at this. So they're both able to escape by making them set them free and then like offing themselves and crashing the ship because why not? They love the theatrics, they love to put on a show. Also at this point we learn that Jessica is a Harkonnen and her father is actually the Baron which is wild. Plot twist of the century.
Jessica's pregnant with the daughter. Now, they spend a couple days in the sand because they're now kind of refugees and because they're inhaling so much sand, which has spice in it, Paul has entered his woke era. He has his third eye. He basically becomes like Bran from Game of Thrones when he becomes the raven and can see like the past and the future. And this is because he, of course, is woke, but he also has these psychic abilities where he can see the future because he has these dreams that come true. So then they run into Duncan, who used to be Paul's personal trainer before they went to Arrakis. And he brings him to visit the Freemen because he went to live with them after the invasion. And then the Freemen are basically just the indigenous peoples of Dune, and they were able to avoid being colonized by the Harkonnens. And they're quite fine with Paul assimilating into their culture because they say that he's useful, which is just a like dog whistle code word for him being a man and they're okay with that. But they don't want Jessica to come into the community because she's not useful. That's right y'all, misogyny transcends universes, planets even. Are we surprised? But also this is kind of like an inconsistency in the story that doesn't make sense because they're literally a matriarchy, like they love women in this society so make it make sense. So then there ends up being a fight against Paul and some guy who opposes Paul's mother coming into the community and it's a battle to the death and Paul wins somehow. Now this is a particularly stupid plot point because tell me how a 15 year old twink described as skinny and small for his age is able to beat one of the strongest Freeman fighters. First try. Like what type of plot armor is this? Make it make sense. The map is not mapping. Where is this plot armor and where can I acquire it because I seem to need it in my daily life. That basket of laundry needs to be done. I'm not doing it for another week. But anyways, once Paul is accepted into the community, they want to give him a new name because that's just what happens. So they call him Paul Mwadib because he wants to keep a part of his Atreides name. Um, so he keeps the name Paul Atreides, I guess, but he also has the name Mwadib because Mwadib means mouse and he's a little twink, so it just makes sense. These lips are not going dry anytime soon. Also, I really love this. I know I talk shit about it in one of my videos, but I really like it. It's a lip plumper and, what am I doing? It's a lip plumper and it kind of burns now, but it's good, it's cute. What the fuck? Okay, moving on. So then Paul meets Chani and she's played by Zendaya, which is a super slay, one of the only slays in this entire book and movie franchise. Argue with the wall. However, she, like most other women in this book, is very docile and like very complacent and just kind of does what she's told because that's what women do in this book for some reason. Frank Herbert, I'm side eyeing you. And honestly, I like the version of Chani in the movie better because she's at least holds her own a little bit better and she doesn't just roll down when people tell her to. But y'all already know I'm, I'm gonna love the movie version of Chani better because Zendaya is the Disney queen we all know and love. I stay remembering. I know Rocky and Cece. I hear that when you're doing eyeshadow, you're supposed to do darkest to lightest, so I'm gonna try that out and see if it works. Sigma Far would love this book. He would eat, sleep, drink, and breathe this book. He is rolling in his grave as we speak while I mention this book. Because tell me why Jessica is in love with her son. She is literally in love with him. Tell me why she gets mad that Paul sings Chaney a love song and she gets jealous and wants him to sing it to her instead. Like, girl, he is not your man. Now, because Paul killed a guy, he has to take care of his family. The guy has two sons and a wife. And instead of wifing the wife up, he just makes her a maid. And she's like, wow. Why don't you wife me up? And he's like, nah. <laughs> Which is really funny. It's the most asexual thing ever and it's really funny. And then Paul's mom undergoes the process of becoming the Freeman's version of a Bene Gesserit. Basically, they have a revered mother who's like the religious figure and they're like a spiritual guider. But the revered mother is really old, so they need a new one. And then the leader of the community is like, hey, why don't you become one? And she's like, um, shit, why not? If you're asking, I may as well. May as well try. She undergoes this process by drinking the water of life. The revered mother gives all of her consciousness to Jessica, and then she somehow gains all the other revered mothers from history, like every single past revered mother's consciousness. The gag is, Jessica is pregnant. When she undergoes this process of becoming the new revered mother, the baby in her stomach also becomes a new revered mother. So there's two new revered mothers now. Crazy. Also, I'm using this palette. Um, I'm just using like the brown shades like around here. I'm just mixing and matching. Cause we like to live a little bit dangerously around here on this channel. So then a bunch of other things happen that really do not matter to me. He drinks the water of life. He develops another third eye. So he has like a third eye squared, I guess. And then he also rides a sandworm, which is like a really cool thing in Freeman culture, I guess. It's like pretty common and people usually do it, but like Paul isn't supposed to be able to do it because he's not a Freeman. 
but basically he does it with ease. This guy has plot armor to the max. He's decked out, he's iced out in plot armor. Sandworms can feel the vibration of people when they walk on the sand. So basically he's able to ride a sandworm and not die. And it's like, ooh, white man can ride a sandworm. The crowd goes wild. Let's move on, who cares? So then Jessica's daughter is born. Her name is Aaliyah and she basically has the consciousness of a full grown adult because of the revered mother process. She has a third eye and Jessica has a third eye. Everyone in this universe has a third eye. Also their eyes turn blue when they have spice because spice turns their eye blue when they're just constantly high, I guess. Sounds like a good time, honestly. However, Spice is also very addictive, so it's kind of interesting to see how they explore like addiction because once you're on that za, you can't get off that za. Spice is a way of life. So then we have this quote. Um, let me just read it out real quick. I cannot back down. I must hold control over these people. And this is Paul talking about the Freeman. This is where we see him becoming a weird colonizer, white savior guy. The only reason why he's with the Freeman is because he wants to get revenge on the Harkonnens because they are very powerful and very well known for their ability to fight. And he's like, if I can get these people on my side well that could be the Harkonnens so basically that's what he tries to do and he tries to like go to war with them but that happens later in the book I don't like how this is turning out I want it to be a little bit warmer so then in the book we're in like the second half of the book also we find out that Paul has a son isn't this guy like 15 or 16 like what how does he have a son already I know how babies are made okay I know it's not like nothing crazy but like I don't know it just took me by surprise I was like what you just got here, you just met her, wait, what? Because Chaney's the mom and he has a son. Like, what? And the son's like two. Wait, he's like 17 now. What is this? What is this time jump? So then he plans to move south and Dune, which is like apparently this unlivable land. And he tries to get Stilgar, who is like the Freeman leader. He's like, if you don't get the Dune people to follow me to the south, then bad things are gonna happen, buddy. And so Stilgar is like, oh, fine, I'll get them to do it. Like he threatens him, like, Again, how do, you, how do you, as a powerful warrior, allow yourself to be threatened by a twink? My god, bro. Oh, hell, hell no. no. I invited this guy. Get your ass. I swear, those bitches are gremlins. Those guys are scary. You need to look out for them. Listen to all the twinks out there. We love and appreciate you. But I'm afraid of you. With love, subscribe. Hit that like button. Leave a comment about how you love twinks, because we love twinks on this channel. We hate George Orwell. Comment we hate George Orwell if you hate George Orwell. Our boy Paul, he's undergoing this plan to track down the Harkonnens, slowly like pick out their troops until there's nothing left of them. Also, um, Paul drinks the water of life. I thought he did it before, but apparently not. It puts him in a coma for about three weeks, but he thinks it happened within a couple of hours. Everyone's afraid for his life because apparently if you drink the water of life, you do die because you're a man. Jessica character development she has some character development arc here she gets Cheney to help paul stay alive because somehow she's able to do that and she helps him wake up from the coma and then he devises this plan and what did i write here he wants to take control of spice because he has the ability to destroy it and its makers also it's confirmed that he is the lisan al gaib which means that he's a prophet from a different planet that's there to guide the freeman so yeah, he's a white savior and he wants to destroy Spice, which is the main money maker of this planet because money is power. Let me hear it, money is power. And he's like, if I can't have it, y'all can't. He is the type of petty that I achieve in my daily life. And I see nothing wrong with it. I see no flaws in his plan. I'm kidding. I see many flaws in his plan. Also, I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk about the watermelon country because we're out here talking about colonialism and colonization. I'm kind of ashamed that it's taken me this long to talk about it the watermelon people on my channel um but i didn't think that anyone would care because there's very few people watching me however very few is better than none so y'all we are supporting the watermelon country in this channel if you don't you can see yourself out but basically yeah i don't stand for colonialism the indigenous peoples of any land should be able to live there because it is their land and no one cares about what a book says no one cares that your religion tells you that you can go somewhere just because it says you can doesn't mean you should have you guys learned nothing from the transatlantic slave trade and the colonialism jojo have you learned nothing jojo have you learned nothing anyways anyone who supports them should not exist I said that in the most censored way I can, but if you don't understand what I'm saying, then I'm sorry, you just simply should read more. Crack open a book, okay? And tell me how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna read off my notes again because I simply cannot bother to memorize my notes and then say it back to you because I've been trying to do that and I'm tired, okay? It's like, it's 9.07 p.m. I'm ready to pack it in, okay? And my eyes look like, 
what is going on here? I looked so good before. I might just have to take it off. Anyways, let me read my notes really quick. They launch an attack on the Harkonnens, and during the attack, Paul's son is killed, and his sister is taken captive. This is like what I mentioned before, and I feel like this was like a flashback or something, or a flash forward in the early part of the book, but I don't care enough to like look it up. I'm sure Reddit has answers, and if you want those answers, then you should go on Reddit. But here's the gag. I literally wrote that down. I'm so funny. Here's the gag. The Emperor of the World took them captive, not the Harkonnens. All right, let me explain this real quick. So basically, I mentioned before that there's an Emperor of the entire world because this is a galaxy and not just a country that they're running. Basically, the Emperor was like, oh, the Harkonnens are gonna not slaying like they should be let me do the work for them since they are incompetent and then he takes captive of the atreides family because he wants the harkonnens to have control the emperor was after the atreides family the entire time he wanted to eliminate the line of the atreides i don't know why i was at this point not really listening very much he took control and then he took captive of jessica too and paul's sister alia and his son i think i think it's just his son who dies but yeah that's that's the plot twist oh so then here's where i start to like Aaliyah because before this Aaliyah was just really annoying in my opinion but she actually does one really funny thing and kills the baron tell me how a two-year-old is able to do this better than most of the bitches who are involved in the politics and society how did she do this i think she poisoned him or something i don't care enough to like remember and then there's this weird sequence where austin butler austin yes austin butler he is the harkonnen baron's nephew he tries to battle paul atreides and he loses miserably and it's really funny then he dies and then paul is like all right since y'all are incompetent let me take over rule now he strikes up a deal with the emperor to distribute the planets in the way that Paul wants. So Jessica wants Kaladin because that's her that's her country. Paul wants Arrakis and then he also vows to marry Florence Pugh who is the emperor's daughter just for like a political match I guess. How this book um, differs from the movie is that um, Chani is completely fine with this and she's like yeah that's, that's chill. I'm fine with that. And then in the movie, he, she's like, fuck no, like, what the fuck? And that just also just goes to show like how different the writing of the character was. And I really appreciate how Janie was in the movie better because she's noticed what kind of person that Paul was becoming and she didn't stand for it. However, in the book, Janie was fine with it because she was like, mm, that's my man, I'm gonna stay by him. I stand for men's rights and wrongs. And I say, nay, nay, I say, we're not about that on this channel. If a man does something wrong, call him out. Unless it makes you unsafe because we want you to be okay girly pop so basically yeah she stays with him and everything's fine okay this is what pissed me off this is the ending line of the book let me read it out to you think on it Chani. that princess will have the name yet she'll live as less than a concubine never to know a moment of tenderness from whom the man she is bound while we Chani, we who carry the name of concubine history will call us wives like huh take a guess who said that quote hit the like button while you're at it it was in fact paul atreides timmy tim timothy chalamet's mom who said that i swear this entire book she's been tweaking she's been moving mad the way i violently jerked while i was walking to work hearing that audiobook i was like what am i what are my ears witnessing right now what that's how frank herbert's gonna end the book by jessica atreides being a pick me girl really that's how we're going out with a bang that's the bang we're going out with at least in the movie it was like a cool little like oh yes we are going to take over the planet but this is just like he's my man like huh really so if you couldn't tell i didn't like the book very much i much prefer the movies and that's saying a lot because the movies are really fucking boring i'm still mad about that like what zendaya literally had no role who cares like she literally didn't do anything just as for zendaya man and her ugh, man that pissed me off pissing the fuck off i did do like an entire analysis on this i basically compared paul atreides to toussaint who is a haitian french revolutionist we just talked about like their similarities and differences as saviors of a nation paul atreides being a white savior and toussaint being a emancipator for black people in haiti because he led one of the only successful emancipations of black slaves in like the 17th or 18th century i can't remember when it was but yeah it was like in the slavery era and yeah he basically freed saint dominique which was the french colony and then it became haiti love history um basically that's what i did for my dude assignment i saw this motherfucker on youtube shorts that's how you know i was raging because i was watching youtube shorts bed rotting until 6 p.m and i saw this you know that black girl who's like conservative and she's like i'm not even that conservative but she's like really like racist somehow and it's like very clearly internalized racism and she's like light-skinned 
and she always has that like puff ponytail. I don't like her very much because she was like, dude, isn't a white savior movie? And if you think that, then you didn't watch the movie. Girl, did you watch the movie? Did you read the book? Did you do a quick Wikipedia search and see what Frank Herbert was trying to write about? I even did that and I'm very lazy. It is very clearly a book about white saviors. Arrakis is based on Iraq. Kaladin and the Atreides family and basically everyone else is based on colonial powers. It's just so clear how they're taking people of Dune and they're basically being like, we need to save them and I'm going to save them because I am their spiritual leader. I am their Lisan al Gaib, their destined ruler, and I'm here to save them from themselves because they're not living the best way that they should be. And I'm going to lead them to glory. That's basically what Paul was like. You can't tell me that's not a white savior book. The girl did not even read the book. That just made me mad. I know I talk a lot about things that make me mad, but conservative people who are just so blatantly and very confidently incorrect, since they have the confidence of a mediocre white man. It's very impressive, honestly. I'm gonna finish up this makeup look. All right, here's the final look. It's very evident that I couldn't see what I was doing while I was doing my makeup because I didn't have my glasses on. So it looks a bit off. Let me adjust a little bit. Oh, they're serving looks. They're serving face. Okay, um, this is basically the look. Um, I put this little scarf, but I didn't want to wear it on my head like a hijab because I'm not trying to cultural appropriate. I'm not trying to like do all that. If you like it, let me know in the comments. Oh, let's talk about book talk really quickly because why not? Why not? I'm a book talker. I'm a booktuber. I'm telling this video, Dune is the spiciest book I've ever read because I think it's funny. And in my last video, which is linked in my description, hopefully, if I remember, I basically talked about how book talkers are obsessed with spicy books and it's to the point where it's almost an addiction. We should take it easy on them because who cares? It's not that serious. It's just this inside joke kind of, not really. The girls are like, does it have spice? And then you're like, no, it's the Bible. I saw a TikTok comment that said, does it have spice? Yes, girl, it's doomed. So I'm taking inspiration from that comment. This is what the byproduct is. Anyways, everyone's moving around in my house and it's making me a little bit annoyed, but we ball. Thank you for watching the video if you got this far. I appreciate it. Leave me any book recommendations you might have in the comments. Also, let me know how you felt about the Dune book and the movie series because I'd be interested to know. Am I the only one who's a hater? I actually didn't even hate that book that much. I forgot to rate it. I read the book about three out of five stars. It's a good book. It just wasn't good for me. It's just not something that I'm interested. I'm not really a sci-fi reader to begin with. I don't even know why I picked up this book in the first place. Like, I know why i just don't know why like you know what i'm saying i think that's it i'm gonna go film some tiktoks now if you want to find my tiktok and everything links in the description love seeing you here if you're returning and if you're new then thank you for coming thank you for stopping by feel free to come by again next week and i will see you guys later i don't have the dune book with me because it was a library book so i'm gonna take this crusty brown powder that i used today that hurts my eyes Bye guys. Ladies and gentlemen of the Gallery Gourmet, my name is Paul Mwadib Atreides, Duke of Arrakis. I'm going to the world, to the game.